What is going on everybody? Bengali in here coming back at you with another video and today I have another mock draft for you. A couple weeks ago I want to say I did my way too early mock draft and I even said in the intro none of this feels right. It just it was kind of weird, very bad, I didn't like it, I uploaded it anyway. It did pretty well in terms of views, uh, good support on it. Just I've altered some of my picks because some of them I went back and like I don't know what I was thinking. I did it at like four in the morning. I'm like this just doesn't make sense. So I have a revised too early mock draft that I think you guys might enjoy. And it is, again, certainly interesting one. And I'll try to explain my picks a little bit better because some of you don't understand why something would be something, if you know what I mean. I know that's fairly vague, but we'll get right into it. And I'm sure you'll see what I mean. With the first pick, I have the Cleveland Browns selecting Josh Rosen, a quarterback out of UCLA. The team needs that I have listed for the Browns here, quarterback, linebacker, safety, and wide receiver. However, I think quarterback makes the most sense for them at number one. And I think Josh Rosen will rise to uh, the cream of the crop as the best quarterback in this class. I think he just, he has the best ability, or at least that's what I think teams will think. He's not my QB one, but he is a very good player. I recognize that. And I think the Browns take themselves, hopefully their future franchise quarterback. I want the Browns to succeed. I'm not a Browns fan, but... I like the Browns, man. I, I'm, I'm hoping they can finally turn their stuff around. I think Josh Rosen could be exactly what they need to play the quarterback position and maybe finally turn that franchise around. Even though Sam Darnold said, you know, the Browns have the number one pick, I'm not coming into the draft. Guess what, Sam Darnold? You're not the number one overall pick. Moving on to the San Francisco 49ers at number two, I have them taking Saquon Barkley, running back out of Penn State. And now a lot of people... In my last mock, did not understand why I had Saquon Barkley going to the 49ers. It doesn't make any sense if Carlos Hyde. Here's the thing about Carlos Hyde. The Niners have shown real no interest in bringing him back. He is an impending free agent, which means if he does not re-sign with the 49ers, they will have no running back. I know they have Matt Breida. He's not exactly exceptional. They could do with, I think, the best overall player in this draft in Saquon Barkley and take him at number two. When you have impending free agents, guys that will likely hit the open market, you got to take someone to uh, fill that void. So I think Saquon Barkley makes a ton of sense here for the Niners. Uh, I think it's a pretty popular pick. Moving on to number three, we have my favorite team, the New York Giants, and I have them taking Sam Darnold, quarterback out of USC. Now, I'm not exactly a huge fan of this pick. I think Eli is still playing at a decent enough level. It's just that there's nothing around him in terms of talent whatsoever, especially with Odell going down for the year. The only pieces of the Giants offense that are formidable are Sterling Shepard and Odell Beckham Jr. Evan Ingram has played okay for a rookie, way too many drops, can't run block at all. The offensive line is horrific. The best pieces in the past have been Justin Pugh and Weston Richburg, and they've struggled with health and uh, even playing to their peak levels. And there's nothing else on the offensive line. It's absolutely horrific. I can't tell what's worse anymore, John Jerry or Eric Flowers, even though Eric Flowers has played better as of late. Still not very good. Need help on, on the offense side of the ball, and uh, need help on defense as well. There's never been a linebacking core there, but I think Sam Darnold makes sense for the Giants here as they've shown an absolute just lack of knowledge in anything as they've benched Eli Manning for Geno Smith. We'll see how that game goes. As I'm recording this, that game has not happened yet as I'm sure it's already over by the time you guys are seeing this. I think that's absolutely horrific for Eli, even though it's better to get some other guys in there, Davis Webb, see what he can do before maybe drafting a quarterback. But as of now, if Ben McAdoo and Jerry Reese stay the head coach and the general manager, which I hope they do not, I think they're going to take a quarterback. I don't want it to happen, but I think it makes sense. At number four, I have the Denver Broncos selecting Baker Mayfield, quarterback out of Oklahoma. He is my QB1 in this draft class. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I didn't think his tape would be as good as it was. You know, some guys are just system players. I think Baker Mayfield uh, has a decision-making ability. He has the arm strength, the arm talent. Very, very, very good player. I think the second best player in this draft class, perhaps, and I know that's a little bit of an outlandish statement. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at uh, more tape. But Baker Mayfield does make sense here for the Denver Broncos. And this list... Uh, the way we have the order set is based on, I guess it'll be last week, 
of the NFL season. So week 13 by, uh, by the time you guys are seeing this. Baker Mayfield does make sense for the Broncos. They've struggled at quarterback for the past couple of years. They drafted Paxton Lynch. They traded up to 25 to get him, and he just hasn't been a formidable option. Trevor Simeon is a former 6th or 7th round pick. He hasn't ever really been a solid quarterback, although he did look good in the first couple weeks of the season. That play fell off considerably, and we're not even going to talk about Brock Osweiler back in Denver. They need a quarterback. John Elway is going to take his quarterback of the future in Baker Mayfield, who will likely win the Heisman. And now moving on to the Indianapolis Colts, I have them selecting Connor Williams, an offensive tackle out of Texas. He was not in my first round in my last mock draft that I did, and the reason I did that is because one, there is certain um, injury concerns associated with Connor Williams, and there's an uncertainty of whether he'll actually come into the draft or not. I don't know if he's made a decision on that yet. I don't think so, but you got to help Andrew Luck if he ever gets back to the field. You got to upgrade that offensive line. I think Connor Williams makes a ton of sense for them here. Um, probably the best tackle available, even with the injury concerns. I think he sneaks into the top 10. Moving on to the Bears, I have them selecting Cortland Sutton, a wide receiver out of SMU. I think there are a number of really good wide receiver prospects in this class. You talk about guys like Calvin Ridley, maybe James Washington, Christian Kirk, uh, etc. But I think that Cortland Sutton makes the most sense for the Bears here, adding another big target to go along with uh, Cameron Meredith, if he can stay healthy. And I think the two big targets worked well for Jay Cutler when it was Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. I think maybe the Bears would not shy away with doing something similar to that as they've shown a tendency to go after those taller receivers. Um, you know, I guess minus Kendall Wright, who they brought in free agency. And, but uh, Cortland Sutton, I think he makes a ton of sense. He's had a pretty good season at SMU and um, would be an awesome target for Mitchell Trubisky to throw to. Moving on to the Browns, second pick here in the first round, and also in the top 10, I have them selecting Minka Fitzpatrick, a defensive back out of Alabama. The reason I call him a defensive back is because I'm not exactly sure what Minka Fitzpatrick is going to play in the next level. I think it entirely depends on what team drafts him. He played a lot of cornerback at Alabama, and then he's played a lot of safety at Alabama, and he's done both at an extremely high level. Very talented very versatile player. I think he can fit into a number of different schemes, and he doesn't have to be just one or the other. He doesn't have to play safety, doesn't have to just play cornerback. He can do a bit of both, drop back, be that single high guy over the top, also come into the box, can play nickel corner, can play on the outside. Very, very versatile player. I think he's a tremendous fit for the Browns here, and I think with Cleveland, he would most likely play safety because you have Jason McCourty, who is older, but is it playing at a very high level? Same thing with Brian Body Calhoun. And the safety play has been fairly egregious. Jabril Peppers is looking like a bust. They need to play him in a different style because the way they've been has not been working. I think put him over the top, maybe pair him with Derek Kindred. That'd be not a terrible safety duo. Moving on to the Jets. I believe at number eight. I had them selecting Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. I think Lamar Jackson's just going to test out of this world. And for a team like the Jets, in need of a quarterback, in need of a playmaker, you bring him into that that system. I mean, it depends, I guess, who the coach is next year. Um, but he's going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of Jets fans extremely enticed, intrigued, and interested. You know, their attendance has never struggled, but he's a really exciting young player. And I think if he can refine some of his mechanics be less lazy when throwing the football, make the easy throws. He has the arm talent. He can be a good player at the next level. I just don't think that he will be based on what I've seen. I know a lot of people are going to hate hearing that. Just my opinion. And uh, I'm usually fairly accurate with my opinions in that regard. I think Lamar Jackson can be good. I just, I think he has a lot to work on. And maybe New York is not the best spot for him in terms of his development. But I think it's a good player for the Jets to take here in the top 10. Maybe help out that QB situation in New York. Now I have the Dolphins selecting Ken Webster, cornerback out of Ole Miss. It's kind of tricky for me uh, in terms of who I think the best cornerback is in this draft. Have to, again, watch more tape. Haven't had nearly enough uh, opportunity to get that done. But you have guys like Denzel Ward out of Ohio State, Tavares McFadden, Florida State, Josh Jackson, Iowa. I mean, there's a list of top corners available. And I think... I think 
despite injury concerns, Ken Webster is going to be the first cornerback off the board. The Dolphins cornerback play has not been good, you know, since maybe Brent Grimes was there. They just haven't had the guy. And I think Ken Webster can come in and maybe be that guy that they need in that secondary because it's not a terrible team. They've got a great front seven. Well, they have a pretty good front seven. They have a great front four, but they need to get better in the secondary. You have a number of needs on offense as well. I think they could definitely target offensive line, maybe a running back if Kenyon Drake isn't your guy, maybe linebacker, but I think Ken Webster makes sense here for the Dolphins. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I have them selecting Bradley Chubb, defensive end out of NC State. I think he could slide inside in a 3-4, although the Buccaneers don't play a 3-4, so that's irrelevant, but I think he could stunt on the inside, maybe as a defensive tackle if they needed him to in certain scenarios. I think that's a part of his versatility, but mainly you're going to want Bradley Chubb on the edge. Robert Ayers has played very well this season, but he is 32 in that range. He Robert Ayers is on the wrong side of 30, and you need to get better on that edge, on that defensive line. I think Bradley Chubb is a top 10 player uh, caliber pick in this draft. He falls out of the top 10, I think. This is number 11. And um, quality option for the Bucks. It really is. Really good edge setter. Run defender. Can get after the quarterback. Surprisingly quick burst. He's a good player. Now to the Chargers. Have them selecting Deron Payne, a nose tackle out of Alabama. Really, really like Deron Payne. Huge body in the middle of that field on, well, in the middle of that defensive line, wherever he plays, with surprising athleticism. Alabama just has these incredible trench players year in and year out on the offensive and defensive line, obviously. And he's just another one of those sick, sick players with, again, surprising athleticism. He is incredibly athletic for as big as he is. I think he'd be a fantastic fit on that defensive line. They need to get better on the interior. You have guys like Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, Jeremiah Tachu coming in on the outside. And if you could get a supreme run stuffer with ability to also get after the quarterback, I don't know how you would pass up on that at this pick. I think some other options for the Chargers are also offensive line. I think maybe linebacker. And absolutely, you have to think about quarterback with Phillip Rivers getting up there in age. Moving on to the Bengals. Had them selecting Quentin Nelson, a guard out of Notre Dame. As simply as I can put this, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this pick. I will say that they could also address linebacker, wide receiver, get another target for Andy Dalton or whoever their quarterback might end up being. Cornerback and safety, that play has been weak, and Andy Dalton might not be the best option, so quarterback is always a sneaky pick on the board. But I think Quentin Nelson, just an easy replacement for Kevin Zeitler, and I don't think the Bengals would hesitate when they have one of the top offensive linemen on the board. In this case, a guard out of Notre Dame in Quentin Nelson. Moving on to the Arizona Cardinals, had them selecting Harold Landry, a defensive end out of Boston College. I think you can play him pretty much all over um, on the field. I'm not really positive on how well he drops back into coverage, but you're going to be playing on the edge. You want him getting after the quarterback. And I mean, the Cardinals playing guys like Dwight Freeney on the defensive line in the past has shown that they need more players to get after the quarterback. You have Chandler Jones, who's playing at a very high level, but you need more help. You need to develop more of a pass rush. You do have a decent secondary. Uh, you have guys that have been amazing in the past, like Tyra Matthew. You guys that have been pretty good in the past, playing at an elite level this season, like Tyvon Branch. You have some really good players, but you need to improve that front seven. That's why you drafted Hassan Reddick to be that really versatile player last year, that Swiss Army knife. This time, you got to take another similar type player in the fact that he can do multiple things, but you want him going after the quarterback, another guy with injury concerns, if you will, but off the edge, flying after the quarterback. He's going to be a great fit for the Cardinals. Next up, we have the Oakland Raiders, and I have them selecting Roquan Smith, linebacker out of Georgia. He's probably the best inside linebacker in this class. That's why I have him going here. The linebacker play from the Raiders has been among the worst in the NFL over the past few years. They're right up there with the Giants in terms of worst linebacking core in the league. And I know people are thinking Khalil Mack, Bruce Irvin, they're pretty good linebackers. We're going to call them edge rushers. They're not really what we're talking about when we mean linebacker, even though they could be classified under that position. But not really what I'm talking about. Their inside linebacker play has been awful. They have no ability to cover the tight end. I think Roquan Smith is a guy that gets after the running back, has field-to-field -field, um, length, speed, 
can cover that, you know, sideline to sideline type player, but they need to help cover the tight end. And I think Roquan Smith also has decent coverage ability, should help out the Raiders quite a bit. Moving on to the Dallas Cowboys, have them selecting Arden Key, a defensive end out of LSU. And I was a little bit, um, not worried, worried isn't the right phrase, but I was a little bit hesitant to make this pick for the Cowboys as Arden Key has off the field issues if you will, and we've been talking about injury concerns and not so much off the field stuff, but Arden Key is a guy that maybe has that. Um, there are reports of some things that I won't get into. Not like anything real bad, but they're just, you know, character concerns and, and off the field stuff. And with the Cowboys having guys like, like Demarcus Lawrence in the past has been getting into some stuff and uh, Randy Gregory, same exact deal. It seems like it's, you know, thing after thing after thing with the Cowboys, especially with pass rushers, I guess. But I think Arden Key is a tremendous player. As a Giants fan, I would hate to see this pick because Arden Key is such an athletic freak that has such a high ceiling, even though he's maybe not the most refined pass rusher right now and his production hasn't been there over this past season. He's still a really, really good player with a very high ceiling, even though it's kind of a low floor. I think the Cowboys would benefit from taking a pass rusher, upgrade that pass rush in the event that Demarcus Lawrence leaves. I know their defensive line's good. David Irving, I would call more of a defensive tackle. Demarcus Lawrence is a free agent. You have to think about getting another player in there. You can even play him on the other side. You can really never have enough defensive linemen as the Jacksonville Jaguars have shown this year. Now to the Washington Redskins. Have them selecting Derwin James, safety out of Florida State. One of the most hyped up players in this class, but also people hate Derwin James. I don't get it. I think he's a really, really good player. I think that he's been just almost comically under and misutilized at Florida State. You have such a, a high caliber player with such tremendous ability all over the field. If I had to draw a comparison, and I, it's a little bit much, but I think he's right up there in terms of you know, same caliber with Sean Taylor coming out of Miami and in the way that he can rush after the passer, he can go after the quarterback. I've seen him move offensive linemen and push them down. I've seen him make incredible hits, great coverage plays, incredible closing speed. Derwin James is a really, really good player. It's all about finding the right system to play, in, play him in, play him to his strengths. It's like a Landon Collins situation where he came out of Alabama and was arguably the worst defensive back in the league his rookie season with the Giants. And the Giants say, hey, maybe we don't play him at free safety anymore. We move him more into the box and move on to the other side of the field at strong safety. Let him do what he does in terms of getting after the running back in the backfield, making tackles for losses, going sideline to sideline. And Landon Collins has obviously been exceptional in that role. Find the perfect role for Darwin James and he will be an incredible player. Redskins, I think, get a steal here uh, midway through the first. Now to the Packers. Have them selecting Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State. Again, could be the best cornerback in this class. Not 100% sure yet, but the Packers need a cornerback. Their secondary is so bad, in my opinion, because they keep going after safeties and playing them at cornerback. You take a look at Demarius Randall, awesome safety coming out of ASU. So misutilizing Green Bay, in my opinion, when they play him at cornerback. You got like a guy like Micah High that's been a great safety for the Buffalo Bills. Packers are like, we're pretty much going to play him at nickel cornerback, which he wasn't bad in that role, really. But I think you got to take cornerbacks to play cornerback. I think that's, that's pretty much a generally agreed upon thing. And the Packers just haven't done that. They need help at the cornerback position. Quentin Rollins is not the guy. You know, like Demarius Randall. Demarius Randall, whatever you want to say. He's not one of the best cornerbacks. He's not a first-round cornerback, and they drafted him in the first round to be a cornerback. Ladarius Gunter. I mean, I could go on and on about the Packers cornerback situation. Bottom line is they need another one. They get one here in this mock draft. Now to the first pick for the Buffalo Bills in this mock draft. Had them selecting Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle out of Michigan. The reason that I wouldn't have him higher and I think this is maybe the highest point that he'll go. It's similar to the Aaron Donald situation where you have a player that's extremely talented, but also extremely undersized for the position. He's only like 270, which is like, that's almost like an edge rusher, but he's an interior player. He's not an edge guy, not even at all. Aaron Donald is a guy that was a little bit bigger 
then Maurice Hurst, and then ended up going at number 10. So I could see Maurice Hurst get inside um, the first round easily. I could. Very talented player. I think, you know, the Bills trade away Marcel Darius. Kyle Williams is like 90, something in that range, close to 89, 88. He's very old. You need help on the interior of the defensive line. I think Kyle Williams is actually like 33. He's, he's old, is my point. But Maurice Hurst could be that guy that helps you out. I think I had Trenton Thompson here um, in my last mock, but they're going to go after a different different defensive tackle here. Maurice Hurst out of Michigan, undersized, incredibly effective, could definitely sneak his way into the first round. Now to the Detroit Lions. I have them selecting Darius Geis out of LSU, a running back. They need help at the running back position. I know the way they've utilized their running backs in the past have mainly been scat backs, guys out of the backfield to catch the ball, things like that. You look at Theo Riddick. And they really haven't had that bell cow, that sick running back, since obviously Barry Sanders. I mean, there have been some guys um, that have shown things for the Lions. You look at Javid Best before injury. You know, Amir Abdullah was a third round pick, I think. Maybe he snuck into the second. He was never really going to be the guy. And he's shown things as well, but he's not a number one. Joik Bell was never a number one. They need that number one. I think Darius Geis is the guy that can just really make this offense way more dynamic and i'm sure lions fans will agree with me that the coaching staff in detroit is absolutely horrific the play calling maybe even worse than the coaching staff somehow and maybe a running back will help out that situation i think it's certainly a team need i could also see them going after a defensive lineman an offensive lineman um or anything in the secondary i think cornerback may be the most likely here if they don't go running back but i think darius guys could easily sneak his way into the first. A lot of talented running backs in this class, and we have, we have one going at number two, which is nearly unheard of over the past couple of years. But moving on to the Seattle Seahawks, have them taking Cleveland Farrell, a defensive end out of Clemson. It's hard to tell whether he's an incredible player because he's shown flashes at Clemson of being an incredible player. I'm talking top 10, even top five pick in the draft. But he has so many other talented players on that Clemson defensive line. He's not going to be penalized for that. We'll get to Christian Wilkins later in this draft class. I really, really like Cleveland Farrell. I think he's going to be a sick player. And I think with Cliff Averill having not only injury, but also age concerns, Frank Clark's played well, but you need help on the defensive line, on that edge, setting the edge, going after the quarterback. Cleveland Farrell is a great player. I think he'd fit very well here. Now to the Baltimore Ravens. Surprise, surprise, the best Alabama player available. Ozzie Smith, not Ozzie Smith, Ozzie Newsom takes Alabama players at every single conceivable option. Anytime an Alabama player is on the board, they're the guy for the Baltimore Ravens. But coincidentally, with Eric Weddle getting way up there in age, he's like 32, 33 even, you need help at the safety position. Ronnie Harrison, I think, could play free safety. I think he has that in his abilities. Good player for the Ravens. You know, they've shown that they can draft safeties in the past. Matt Elam, they're not afraid to take one. Although he didn't go to Alabama. Maybe that was their issue. He's a Florida guy. But yeah, I feel like best Alabama player available. Makes sense. The Buffalo Bills are back on the clock. I have them taking Josh Allen. I mean, this is a quarterback heavy draft. I think many of us would agree as we saw three quarterbacks go in the top four picks in this particular mock draft but i think there are so many teams that are quarterback needy the buffalo bills not really being one of them because i think tyrod taylor is a more than capable starter but the bills and i guess bills fans hate tyrod taylor unbeknownst to me as to why i'm sure they're going to make something up in the comments section but that's that's regardless that doesn't really matter Josh Allen is kind of a weird player in the fact that he could be Blake Bortles 2.0, which is unfortunate, uh, but he just hasn't really developed at a, even at a place like Wyoming the way you'd like him to. He has the arm talent. He really does, but he just needs to get more accurate. His accuracy is, is so bad at times, but with the Bills showing that they're quarterback needy, I could see them taking a quarterback. If you're going to bench Tyrod Taylor for Nathan Peterman... <laughs> Like, what are you doing? You clearly have no faith in your quarterback. Tyrod Taylor likely will be traded, and maybe that leaves a team open um, to draft a quarterback if you know, they don't get Tyrod Taylor traded to them. I'm not really sure what the trade situation is, but Bills have shown that they're potentially quarterback needy. I think Josh Allen is maybe the best quarterback available right now. The Falcons are on the clock next. I have them taking Vita Vea, a nose tackle out of Washington. 
He's shown to be a dominant run stuffer. I'm not really sure he's much else. I think he would fit the Falcon system fairly well as you have guys like Grady Jarrett that are exceptional at stopping the run and going after the passer. And a guy like Dontari Poe that's always been more of a run stopper, always more of a nose tackle, is going to be a free agent. He could very easily walk or the Falcons could show no interest and not re-sign him, leaving a hole open at that second defensive tackle spot. And a nose would be very helpful to any defense lacking one that's the case for the atlanta falcons i think vita vea is a good player he fits into the system pretty well the rams linebacker play has been so poor it's been so bad and i think rashawn evans who i have the uh, rams taking here would be a very very good player to slide in here now they don't get the georgia linebacker that maybe they wanted right because alec ogletree georgia linebacker Maybe it makes sense. You pair up Roquan Smith, kind of cool. Georgia linebackers. Alec Ogletree's been awful. But you get an Alabama linebacker, and they've produced some pretty good ones over the years. Recently, C.J. Mosley and even Rolando McClain was kind of a bust and then came back to be pretty good, and then it was back on the lean nearly immediately as soon as he was good again. But Alabama produces pretty good linebacking players. That's just a fact. Rashawn Evans could be the next one uh, in that pedigree. Very good inside linebacker, another guy that goes field to field, or excuse me, sideline to sideline on the field. And um, yeah, the Rams need to get better at linebacker. I could also see them taking a cornerback, kind of really, really making that secondary amazing. I could see them taking offensive line to help out some of that uh, some of that weak offensive line core. It's, it's a bad group overall, especially with Andrew Whitworth being as old as he is. Rob Havenstein's not bad, but that's beside the point. You could upgrade on the offensive line, I think, pretty easily. But in this situation, I think linebacker makes a ton of sense for the Rams. They take Rashawn Evans. The Jaguars are another team that are quarterback needy. This team is a Super Bowl caliber team, if not for Blake Bortles. He is so, so, so bad. Absolutely terrible. One of the worst starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Bottom three, I think, for sure. Um, if we're not really accounting injuries, because obviously, like, you know, well, not obviously. I think Brett Hundley's still probably better than Blake Bortles. Yeah, that's unfortunate for number three overall pick, former, that is. It's kind of a weird spot for me because I don't think Mason Rudolph is a first-round player by any means. But when you have quarterbacks flying off the board the way we've seen in this draft with Josh Rosen, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Josh Allen, and now I think it only makes sense for a team that needs a quarterback. You know, maybe they'll end up with Tyrod Taylor or Eli Manning, however that ends up working out. But they could easily take a quarterback if they see the need. Um, you could potentially wait on one, but with, you know, some teams needing backups like New England, they could easily go in the second and you get your player while you want them. I'm not sure how high teams are on each individual players. I don't think Mason Rudolph is all that good, but he's a pick here for the Jaguars as he sneaks into the first round. Next up, I have the Tennessee Titans selecting Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Defensive end slash outside linebacker. We're just going to call him an edge out of Kansas. He's the one good player Kansas has had all year. The one good player. And his production was awesome. A year ago and it's slowed down this year in terms of pra uh, pass rush productivity but he's been excellent um, in stuffing the run he's shown the ability to do both over different years so he's a player that's super intriguing super athletic he's going to test out of this world could be a great player for the tennessee titans help out that pass rush he could be the pick i think um uh, like basically what you wanted in kevin dodd that hasn't really materialized yet if that ever will. I think Dorrance Armstrong Jr. is exactly what you want a Kevin Dodd to be. Now the Carolina Panthers have them selecting Christian Kirk, wide receiver out of Texas A&M. You trade away Kelvin Benjamin. You needed probably help at the receiver position anyway. Devin Funches is not a true number one, and I'm not convinced that Christian Kirk is either. However, I think he could easily get into the first round. I think teams could take him um, in the, one of those top 32 picks. I wouldn't be surprised to see Christian Kirk as a first-round guy, even if I don't particularly grade him all that highly as a you know, top first-round caliber player. Panthers need help at the receiver position. You got to make that offense better. You do, because Cam Newton can't do it all by himself. Jonathan Stewart's a capable running back. Same thing with Christian McCaffrey. You hope that he, he really keeps on developing. But you, you pretty much use him as a receiver. 
you need another receiver <laughs> all right you can't have christian mccaffrey be your leading receiver i think he actually might be i'm not positive on that but he might be that's that's a sad situation in this situation you take the best receiver you think available i think maybe the panthers will think that of christian kirk let's go ahead and move on saints are on the clock next and i know their defense has played extremely well but that doesn't mean it can't get better. They take an inside linebacker with this pick, and that's someone fairly close to the Louisiana area um, in Malik Hooker. Nope, not the crew. What? Malik Jefferson, <laughs> excuse me, inside linebacker out of Texas, you know, at Austin. He's a really, really good player. I am a Texas fan. So I've seen Malik Jefferson really, really mature into a fantastic player over this past year. And I'm aware it's the Big 12. It's not exactly the best conference, but he has been so so good for my longhorns this year despite the longhorns being absolutely horrific as a team uh they do have a couple of good players out there including but not limited to malik jefferson to sean elliott etc they need to get better on the inside i think with the rest of that defense being as good as it's been you look at alex okafor being so good on the outside not even to mention Sheldon Reagans on the inside and Cameron Jordan's been fantastic on the other edge. You have the secondary being phenomenal. Marshawn Lattimore, when healthy, was the best cornerback arguably in football. Ken Crawley's played super well. You got Von Bell. You have the rookie out of Utah. Marcus Williams has played well. You have Kenny Vaccaro, former first round pick. He needs to get better. But point being, the defense has played so, so well. I think linebackers one spot that they could um, have room to improve. Malik Jefferson, probably the best linebacker on the board. You take him with this pick. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers. Had them taking Joshua Jackson, cornerback out of Iowa. Josh Jackson, whatever. He has been a ball hawk for Iowa. And the last ball hawk I can remember for Iowa was Desmond King, who for some reason fell off everybody's boards. And is now playing super, super well for the Chargers. But then again, who isn't that cornerback? Casey Hayward's an absolute stud. Trevor Williams has played super well, as has Desmond King. As Jason Verrett does when he's healthy. They might have the best four cornerbacks to ever play on a football team. And I know that's a crazy thing to say. But how many teams have that many good cornerbacks? They have four really really good cornerbacks we're not talking about the Chargers. i don't know why we're back on this but josh jackson i think he's an extremely extremely good player in terms of playmaking ability i need to watch the tape more to really see how he is uh in coverage in terms of fluidity and uh recognition and things like that ball skills all that but he, he probably has the ball skills he gets a lot of interceptions sealers need help in the secondary at cornerback Artie burns has been fairly solid but you don't really have another cornerback william gay is not the guy i think he's the pick here uh, and i mean as when i say he i mean of course josh jackson the vikings cornerback play has been very good i will not lie xavier rhodes is nearly well I, it's i think it's it's close xavier rhodes is about a top 10 cornerback in football terrence newman is fantastic but also He's another player that's getting up there. He must be at least 138 years old. I don't, yeah. He actually might be 38 in, in reality. He's so old. But he's also still pretty good. Regardless, you need another cornerback. They'd have such a good secondary if they addressed another cornerback spot. Trey Waynes, I don't think, has ever really been too amazing. But even if Trey Waynes is still, you know, your guy, if you want Trey Waynes to be one of those guys, you need another one. I think Tavares McFadden has great size on um, on the outside, and that's what the Vikings have shown an interest in drafting. 6'1", Xavier Rhodes. You have 6'1", Trey Waynes. Now you get a 6'2", Tavares McFadden out of Florida State. Decent cornerback option. And now to the New England Patriots. Have them taking Christian Wilkins, a defensive tackle out of Clemson, and how did he fall this far down the board? He is such a good player on that Clemson defensive line. He's really the thing that I think makes it dominant. He is so good i think austin bryant is also awesome and cleveland farrell we talked about him earlier but how does christian wilkins fall this far down the board being such a tremendous player i'm not sure the patriots need to get better on the defensive line especially on the interior christian wilkins tremendous player can't say enough good things about him he's the pick here for the patriots at 31 although i don't think the eagles are going to win the super bowl they have the 32nd pick in terms of draft order right now and i have them taking calvin ridley a receiver out of alabama 
Now, as of recording this, Alshon Jeffrey did just uh, lock in on a four-year deal to stay in Philadelphia, and Nelson Aguilar has played well. He has, but I don't think Torrey Smith is, is necessarily your guy, and I keep saying your guy, and when I mean that, I mean, when I say that, I mean quality long-term starter. Torrey Smith also is on the wrong side of 30, so you need to get better and younger at receiver. I think Calvin Ridley offers plenty of of dynamic playmaking ability on the outside and in the slot has been that guy for Alabama all year long. He's Ger not Jerron Hurd. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Hurts, Jalen Hurts, number one option on every single play it seems. And he could be that for Carson Wentz as well, um, especially with Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, you could have a killer combo uh, with those guys. How does Calvin Ridley fall this far down the board? I will never know. But when I'm doing these mock drafts, you got to look at a bunch of different variables, and it's team need, and it's player available at that specific need. You get players that are going to fall and players that will rise in every single draft and mock draft. Hope you guys enjoyed regardless. Hope you liked some of the picks. Hope you disliked some of them. Tell me why you liked or didn't like them, and uh, I think that will add to the conversation. But thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.